So this is the story of a stalwart uh, spacecraft, Cassini, that arrived uh, in, at Saturn in 2004 and has been taking amazing measurements and teaching us all kinds of new things about Saturn ever since. But it is running out of fuel, and it's coming to the end of its mission. So on this slide, you can see uh, the, this represents the rings, and the blue dots across the top represent the position of the spacecraft. And you can see that sort of right in the middle here, on this date, it plummets down uh, into an orbit that is inside the rings. So for all of its history, we've had uh, orbits that have been outside the ring plane. And now uh, it has just, on the 26th of April, made the big dive into uh, inside the ring plane. So this shows a little diagram of the little uh, spacecraft on its way um, on an orbit that's passing outside the outermost of the brightest uh, set of rings, the F ring. Uh, there are a few fainter ones further out. And then uh, on its last orbit, it encounters Titan right there, goes across, gets a gravity assist, which changed its orbit so that now it falls into the uh, much closer to Saturn. And like a bullseye has to hit that gap. <laughs> uh, yes, very frightening, very uh, daunting task. It goes to show, I mean, it's like hitting a golf ball off, off a running horse and having it go into the cup, you know, I mean, uh, it, the precision of that uh, is really a testament to the extraordinary astrodynamicists we have at JPL, but also to just in general how much we actually know about our solar system uh, thanks to science. So um, on its last pass, uh, past Titan, they took a few pictures. There have been so many results from Titan, we won't talk about it now. We will certainly talk a lot about Titan later in the, uh, in the year. And so there are a few last shots here. And, um, and then took its dive into the, uh, the gap. This is just kind of as if you were flying along, because that's kind of fun. Um, and this is an artist's conception, or it's just an animation of what it might look like. Now you can imagine that this had the controllers at JPL a little tense. Uh, because once it goes into the fall, passes that close to the planet, um, you know, is it going to survive? Is it going to get completely demolished by ring particles and dust? Is it going to smash into the planet? How well did we do? So here are just a couple short clips from the night that this took place. So we have carrier signal, which means the spacecraft survived, but now did the data survive? Do we have data? From that you can flight. confirm we have a good lock on the 66360 bitrate data flight. Time just Confirm that the science playback is in lock and starting to run. Copy. So for those of you who have seen a landing, say on Mars, you know that it's a pretty exciting thing. For these folks who have devoted 20 years of their lives to that, to see that spacecraft come back to life and know that we're going to get these extraordinary pictures that I'm about to show you. Uh, of, uh, from the Cassini mission is incredible. So um, fortunately, Google gave us a nice illustration of what was going to happen uh, as, it, as the spacecraft went between the planet and the ring system. It took uh, lots of pictures. There we go. <laughs> and, uh, and kept on going. And this is the result. On the left, you'll see the, the pictures that were taken. Uh, in rapid succession, enough to look almost like a movie. And uh, unprecedented detail of this, the uh, cloud tops of Saturn. Um, and I'll be showing you a few more details of that in the pretty picture section of my short discussion here. Um, but one of the most amazing things that they learned is that there's almost nothing in that gap. <laughs> very, very, very little dust. By comparison, a ring plane crossing outside all of the rings, of the big massive main rings, uh, had this big spike in the number of particles without going into detail. As you might imagine, the, the redder the color, you know, the more particles. Um, whereas, in fact, when it went inside the rings and between the rings and the planet, it had almost no uh, such detections. I just shifted that over so I had the crossing place. At, uh, in alignment with the, the ring plane, just the data were represented a little differently. Um, so you can see there's nothing. I mean, it was basically empty. 
So uh, some pretty cool pictures. Um, you know that Saturn has this amazing hexagon at the top. We've talked about that and the physics of that. That isn't spooky. There's actually physics that can explain why you have this hexagon. Uh, big cyclone on the surface. Mm -hmm. All kinds of details. I mean, more pictures than I can show you of uh, the clouds and the dynamics and the physics going on. And of course, you know, beautiful pictures. Uh, and they're just, there are so many. <laughs> How many are there? There are so many uh, that I encourage you to go on to the raw data site. NASA, JPL, actually has released very few of their own processed, but they put out all the raw ones. So a lot of people are doing their own processing, putting them on the web. I can't account for uh, the scientific accuracy of some of the colors or other things we might see in them, but the people doing it are pretty darn good that we've selected. Uh, so, um, so we'll just continue with a couple more pictures. Here's a shot from over the North Pole. You can see the hexagon of the ring system, so you're kind of looking down from the North Pole as if you were Santa. Uh, this is, was taken May 1st of the F ring, the outermost of the big main ring system. Again, um, there are fainter ones beyond. Um, and it just shows, uh, this little movie shows all the braids and clumps and features uh, in that ring system. This one I just adore. Again, over the surface, um, the sun is behind it, so you're seeing sort of a uh, scattered light uh, uh, through the atmosphere, the top part of uh, Saturn's atmosphere. And that, those are those faint rings out there. And this one I just love because it's just like the animation. It's actual data seen as the spacecraft is pulling away from, uh, from uh, Saturn. How fast so, was the flyby? Uh, you know, I know how fast the crash is, so that's 75,000 miles an hour. 70, so 70,000, thank you. Um, it yeah, it, it, you would imagine it would be pretty close because uh, the gravity is what's pulling it in. Um, so 70,000 uh, miles an hour. Now, uh, it's going to do this a number of times, and this is the height of each of the times that it goes uh, around Saturn. And here's the scary part. A couple of those orbits will be skirting the inside of the innermost A-ring to, as they like to say, mm -hmm. taste the, the ring particles. <laughs> um, and, uh, what? That's 70,000 miles. I know. Well, you know, come on. Uh, they will, for those, turn it so that the antenna, like a shield, will be a shield first as they go through rather than have the instruments kind of hanging out getting blasted. But nonetheless, you know, it's kind of scary. And uh, so several of the last ones are going to be skirting the top of Saturn's atmosphere and tasting. When I say tasting, I mean using instruments to sample and get the chemical compositions of the, uh, of the upper atmosphere of Saturn. So we have this to look forward to all summer long. It is a bittersweet uh, tale because, you know, at the end of this, uh, on September 15th, we say goodbye to this extraordinary mission. Um, the science that we expect to come out of these next, I guess, would have got there five, 11, 17, it looks like about 22 orbits. And a half. We, uh, we've had two, 22 <laughs> and a half. Uh, and uh, and um, so uh, we've had two of them. Um, and we're now in the final climax of that mission. I see a question, yeah? Uh, have they been able to determine if Saturn has a rocky core? Um, the, the actual gravity of the center of the, of the planet is one of the things they're hoping to get good measurements of, and in particular, this is a cool one. They can, they, we don't know the mass of the ring system, and we've always been measuring the mass of the rings plus Saturn, but now that we're inside, we get just the mass of Saturn. So we can subtract and find out what the rings are. Um, so the, uh, that there will be a lot of new results on the insides, the, the internal makeup of Saturn as a result of this science coming out of these flybys. So I want to just finish with one last set of images because this is a last, and that's that picture. The little dot is our big planet, our Earth. Uh, and as some of you know, there have been several pictures taken of Earth from Saturn by Cassini. Um, this is the last one that it will take, uh, last one for quite some time. Um, so we've zoomed in a little bit, and in case you can't see it, you can actually see the moon. Hard to see, little dot there, let's see. There, there it is, we zoomed in even more. And Tony did a little enhancement so we could make out the moon. 
Uh, mm -hmm. There it is. If I go back and you imagine, use your imagination, you can sort of see the moon is there. Uh, so that's kind of amazing. And this, of course, is the last of these portraits that we'll get.